What I've done here is replicate the subterranean section of the Great Pyramid. Now, underneath the Great Pyramid, there was a a room is 27 feet by 56 feet, and uh, there was a shaft that went down to it. It's 330 feet long, so about the length of a football field, and four foot square. And so what I did was replicate the shaft and the room and the water supply, which would have been the moat. This is a moat around all the pyramids, and, and this one, and there was also a water supply from the ancient Lake Morris, which was uphill, so the water just gravity fed through tunnels that have proven to be in, existed down to the moat, and then it just gravity fed. So now what I did, I have this shaft which comes from the water supply would be in the same height as as the moat around the Great Pyramid. And I have it going down into this cement and, and casing here, which has the subchamber room, which is it has this assembly in it, which has input shaft and it has an output shaft. This is the output. It also has a line that drops down through the middle and then down to about 2,000 feet down to the Nile River, which was, which was at a little bit lower elevation. It was in front of the Sphinx Temple. And that was directly in front of the Sphinx. So this pipe here is the pipe which would have gone down to the to the uh, single valve, the wastegate valve that was in front of the Sphinx Temple that went into the actual Nile itself. So this room is in here at this elevation, and it was just put in concrete because I had so many problems with the uh, fiberglass models breaking. So I'm going to go start this up, and this is the same equivalent as down to the Nile. So down at the Nile there would have been would have been a valve that would have been made out of rock, but it essentially exited underneath the uh, underwater uh, down into the Nile and all it was was a very simple uh, sliding valve which when water went by it caused the valve to slam shut and that creates a a shock wave it's a compression wave it's also called referred to as water hammer or hydraulic hammer and it actually causes a shock wave in the water which travels up the pipe uh, and then is redirected and set directly into the core of the Great Pyramid. So it's actually the water causing the, the water hammer. And the only thing that's required to start it is just push the valve in once, starts running. And once running, it will essentially run uh, perpetually, for years anyways, until their maintenance is required. That actually sends a dramatic compression wave up to the core of the Great Pyramid. So up here, now this has started running. It also does, it also does pump water as a secondary aspect. It does mainly used to tune the compression wave, the, the pump in. So up here, the pyramid we have. Well this was this was the Great Pyramid was a room which is called 
the grotto and the well shaft. Some some experts believe it was built was put in after the fact, and some say that it was at the same time the Great Pyramid was built. So I did add it just to see to show that it does run with it. But generally I I actually turn it off. So I'm just going to turn off a valve that shuts it off. And that changes the amplitude, the, the intensity and the, of the different wave and the rate. Now this is the output line here. And you see how it causes it to shake. And that's just the water compression. And that this is a long hose that goes to it. So this water does, it would elevate to the top of the Great Pyramid if, well the original theory came from the, the thought process that they used water in a water lock system to, to elevate blocks during the building process rather than, than ramps and, and slaves. With a water lock system, one person could easily move a block just by just pushing it around on a small draft type system. So it does pump water, so it does prove that it could do that. That's just with the addition of the that very simple valve. But what I did did realize after after knowing Chris Dunn's work, he had surmised that there was a compression wave that came from the subchamber and caused the King's Chamber to resonate. And he, he believed that there was some sort of machine that was in that room. And then after this ran, it became quite apparent that that machine was actually just a uh, hydraulic pulse generator. So it caused the King's Chamber to resonate and it would do it quite dramatically. Now what I had done to demonstrate that it, I'm going to shut off the pumping, to demonstrate that it actually creates shock waves. I actually put a bowl of water over the, the shock wave. So that shows that it does create a compression wave which would have resonated the King's Chamber. And that. And the only other thing I'd like to show is, is actually how simple the valve is. I'm going to pull off the valve and show exactly how simple of a mechanism it was. All this valve is, this is actually just a plunger valve, so when, when water starts flowing by it, it causes enough drag to cause it to slam shut and cause the water to compress, and that compress 
compression of the water causes a compression wave, which is a shock wave. It causes a compression wave, and right after that, it causes extreme low pressure rarefaction wave, which sucks the valve back open. That is, and that's all there is to the uh, Great Pyramid pulse generator.